Um, hangman. Dominoes. Karaoke. Karaoke. It's even a hairbrush, right? If you mix all those together, times 50, that's how many times that is. And Nora's here. All right, see. Okay, everybody, I have just decided we are starting this officially. So, uh, clap because it's starting. So, uh, I'm Joel, and I would like to thank some people who made this possible uh, besides me. One is Adele, who's the owner of the cafe. Uh, and Paige, who's the manager of the whole cafe. Uh, I met with her to talk about the possibility of this, and she said, well, what about equipment? I said, we're not going to have any equipment whatsoever. This is going to be our voices, no microphone, and then she said, well, what if people hold the hairbrush? And then I, I, I clapped my hands right in front of her face. I don't know why I did it. She's like, what, why'd you do that? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. And I said, what if we call it open hairbrush? I was like, oh, uh, okay. And she said, fine. You're, you're like, no, it's amazing. She's like, That's, that sounds great. Make a flyer. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. I ran upstairs. I actually live on the second floor here. This is my basement. Very nice. <laughs> I didn't even bring here. <laughs> uh, I ran upstairs and I got out my etch a sketch because I, I knew all of my graphic design on etch a sketch. Uh, I took a picture of that, um, got my carbon paper, uh, traced it onto uh, some uh, pulp that I, I made, and brought it back down. And we have it hanging over there on the door. And um, I'm very excited to, to actually see this happen. This is the first ever, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Woo! And there are some performers here from your neighborhood, Dennis Park. Yeah. And beyond, who have never performed before and are using this as their very first time. <laughs> so I'm very excited. Now, to, to kick everything off, um, but one thing I should mention too is each person gets five minutes, and I'm gonna stand or sit back there. And at four minutes, with one minute left, I'll, I'll kind of flash my hand, and that means you have one more minute to wrap it up. Um, although we only have five of you, it's Chris now, so you can go for as long as you want, actually. Uh, <laughs> So maybe I'll just wave to you, and I'll give you a thumbs up like it's going well. Nice. Uh, okay, so to be official, I do have yeah. a hairbrush <laughs> that currently is closed. I'm going to open it up. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, before I do, um, this is a, I think it says hard wave brush. Um, it's, it's professional, so this is not an amateur hairbrush. Uh, for today's trendy style, imported boar bristle. Nice. Imported, I, I, I can go with local boar, but this is imported boar. Uh, genuine wadded bases. It says wadded. By the way, this is the first time I'm looking at this. It does say W-O-D-E-N, bases, wadded. Uh, the finest brush made to use on hair and scalp. So even if you don't have hair, you can still It's good for my scalp too. Yeah. Uh, wow. Did you know that boar bristle follicles are most beneficial to stimulating scalp and taking natural oils to the ends of hair to prevent damage? I didn't know that, Joe. It is true. Uh, it says yours trading in College Point, New York, though it was made in China. <laughs> So there. Okay, That's here we go. Uh, table roll, please. It's not too coarse. Um, so this is 
very gimmicky that we're even that I'm even doing this right now. And you do not have to use this like I am using it. But if you need some sort of comfort, I don't know, like a, a Linus blanket. A Linus or, brush. A Linus brush. Or a binky. Yes. Here, this is for you to use. To suck on? Like uh, a binky? Or to look at. Or, hey, you know what? Brush your hair with it. <laughs> Do it. Or a scalp. This is an unused imported war bristle brush. Just saying. Um, okay, I'm going to the official list. I gotta get Are you guys ready? Right. Yeah. Our first person is right. Lander. Yeah. Lander. Yeah. Lander. Lander. I'm going to bring it down several vouchers and read from my new book. I was asked to read from my new book. Oh, that's I don't know cool. why, but uh, here it goes. So, uh, if you could, Joel, bring yeah. me back. Bring me back. Um, just, you know, tell me when, like, a few five minutes are up. I'll tell you. I don't want to read the whole thing, but, um, but I do want to read a little bit so I can kind of hear how it sounds. Uh, anything you want to say? Right. Here we go. Here we go. Columbia University geology professor Martin Gatwick was giving a lecture about Antarctic fossils. fossils. The week I returned to New York City. The fortuitous event was a catalyst for finally finding out, or by, for finally answering questions left unanswered in Guatemala by my Maya friend, Don Ishmata. I had listened to his stories about the lost continent underneath the Antarctic ice at face value in Guatemala. I had neither the means nor the mindset to investigate the accuracy of the Chimitata's colorful myths. Professor Gatwick was one of the leading scientists working in Antarctica, being at the forefront of a new wave of scientific inquiry into the geological history of the lost continent, concealed by a layer of mile-thick ice. Russian scientists had recently announced their discovery of an enormous geologically improbable lake 2.3 miles beneath the surface. In addition to the Russian discovery, American scientists began to, had begun to collect the Antarctic fossils that dated from the late Triassic era. Gatwick was one of a handful of scientists who had returned to the United States with numerous fossils awaiting analysis. In a steady, uh, in In a steady stream of news updates from the international news updates about the Antarctic expedition, I had read nothing about the lost civilization in the headlines, and I doubted I ever would. One part of me had always assumed that Don Ishikawa's stories were allegorical at best or perhaps pure nonsense. While intrigued by Gatwick's proposal, part of me kept insisting that I stay home, sparing the long ride home to Guatemala to Columbia University and back. Undoubtedly, Donish Bata had made up all the stories he had told me in Guatemala, the realist part of me suggested. Could Ish Bata have been no different than Kevin Spacey character, in the, the Kevin Spacey's character in The Usual Suspects, who had built for me a pleasing, or having built for me a pleasing and persuasively real palace by carefully arranging thousands of grains of sand, thousands of grains of truth, like a Scheherazade or a Penelope, had my Guatemalan storyteller woven his stories as a form of survival. The other part of me, the dreamer, wanted Ishmael's continent to be real, or at least some of it. I had spent long hours at airports on airplanes, trains, and in my new bedroom, in an empty apartment, speculating about the Antarctic geologic. <coughs> the oceanography had been one of my favorite courses during my studies at Stanford University, and long before I met Ishmael in Guatemala. Understanding plate tectonics is fundamental for understanding the behavior of the oceans. At Stanford, not only did I learn the ocean, that the Earth is round, I learned that the surface of the Earth is not the static image on every classroom wall or on the face of the globe we grew up spinning. These visual aids provide a snapshot for geological time, but far from being, the static, from being static, the continents and oceans are constantly swirling around like a giant three-dimensional yin-yang. Physical relationship between the continents and the oceans influences even determines the atmosphere. It is common knowledge that a large landmass lies buried beneath the Antarctic. Less commonly known is when and why this landmass was entered for eternal winter. So I asked around. Apparently, most of my friends and family had studied the humanities and were clueless. So, relying on my limited knowledge, I theorized that the Antarctic continent had drifted into the polar region as it had split off from the rest of the landmasses, eventually becoming the seven continents. 
Then, according to my theory, the cold temperatures at that latitude froze the Antarctic temperature, Antarctic temperate forest, like the frozen bag of broccoli in the back of my freezer, awaiting a fork or a pickaxe. Professor Gatwick's lecture would soon illuminate the flaws in my homespun theory. I looked at my smoke, snow boots, boots and lived ambivalently. <laughs> the dreamer told me to put on my boots and brave the snow and the trains. The realist reminded me that all that I had, that I had to eat in the house was the broccoli in my freezer. Seizing this rare moment of alignment between dreamer and realist, I put on my first boot. At that, at, after that, it was all mo momentum. F equals MA. Force equals mass times acceleration. The more mass I acquired as I put on my layers, the more I accelerated in order to, put, to avoid sweating from layer one. Who says humanity majors do not use science on a regular basis? I took the two trade from Brooklyn's Atlantic Avenue to Manhattan's Upper West Side. Room 111 was located in a stately neoclassical building on Columbia's University Main Quad. Including me, I counted 10 people in the audience. Professor Gatwick approached the podium, organized his nose, and leaned into the microphone. Can you hear me? Ted Bob and everyone put their phones on silent. To anyone who has spent so much time in sub zero weather as I have, these cold winter nights can feel like spring. I suppose it's apropos that the cold has disparaged some from attending. After all, I'm about to discuss a place that has been spared by so many millions of years of ice, even scientists have been disparaged from knowing more about Antarctica. They send rockets to the moon to bring back lunar rocks when, right in our backyard, so to speak, we have an undiscovered world. Not only that, it turns out Antarctica is a great place to find lunar rocks. We could have saved ourselves a lot of expenses, like NASA, for example, if lunar rock samples were all we need. If you'd like to read more of the book, you can just find me and I'll share more. But that's my time for tonight, and thank you very much.